Hey, what's up, guys? So I've been doing a lot of videos and a lot of content recently about the trade deadline, obviously, and reasons why the Yankees you know, would be well off doing this and well off doing that, maybe avoid this, maybe avoid that. But all in all, it's with the intention of the team becoming uh, better and more diverse in the short term and the long term. And, you know, a little bit less right-handed, particularly in a stadium that's built for left-handed hitters. And... You know, better pitching, better depth, people that play small ball, people that play medium ball, not only relying on the home run. Guys, they don't get on base. The Yankees currently are the worst team in baseball with runners in scoring position. That's something they need to they need to address. They're also one of the worst two-strike hitting teams in baseball. Another thing they need to address. And I'm a huge fan of, you know, wheeling and dealing on both sides. I don't think, you know, doing one or the other predominantly is, is, isn't going to change anything. There's no one player right now that's going to completely change the direction of the franchise. There are impact players that can set them up in a better trajectory over the next couple of years, and I think they need to bring in guys like that, and we've talked about that, but the other catalyst to you know, my to a lot of my motivation for talking about this and is not only to make the team better, and, and that's why I've talked about potentially mo or even considering moving Judge, which is you know highly unpopular with a lot of people, and that's okay. But, you know, after this season, you know, after 2022, he's going to be a free agent. And are they going to be in a position to give him 150 to $200 million? I know he's the face of the franchise, but he's going to be 31. And, you know, I know he gets a lot of merch, and he's got the judges' chambers, and he's, he's highly popular in New York. I get all that stuff. But there's one thing that not a lot of people are talking about right now, which could prevent the Yankees from putting, from being in a position to do that as well as bringing in other guys. And that's a work stoppage. Okay, there is... Signs are pointing towards a potential baseball strike at the, after the season. You know, collective, uh, there's a new CBA that, that's going to be negotiated and stuff, and it, if both sides can't agree on certain things, or, or mostly everything, then chances are there might be a lockdown, a strike, and it's going to crush teams financially. You know, COVID already did that, particularly the Yankees. They lost hundreds of millions of dollars. And... A strike is going to affect them the same way. So, you know, a second kind of bleeding of finances in within two to four years is going to hurt a lot of teams. It's going to hurt also hurt a lot of the bigger, you know, pay, uh, guys that are due big pays and big paychecks and huge extensions and, like, huge contracts and, and whatnot, which is why this is the time right now for the Yankees to be intelligent and aggressive about bringing in more controllable players. Even if they give up a bunch of prospects, even if they have to trade a player like Judge or Sanchez or Void or whoever, Johnny Luizaga, should you know Chad Green, even though he's had a rough couple of outings, but it's guys like that that actually do have value that could extract a nice package for a team and give the Yankees more prospect depth, high end prospect depth, particularly on the pitching side because they're in need of that, and they're also in need of more controllable players. And we have you know several multi multi hundred million dollar contracts and do we really want to add a, another 150 to 200 million dollar contract to somebody who's 31 I don't know I mean you know, and if you look at his career track record yes when he's healthy he's elite I get it but aside from his rookie season when he played 155 games he has never played more than 112 games in any season so he's missed at least 50 games every season okay with the exception of 2020 which was a shortened season obviously but he still missed he didn't play all the games either. Not only most players did not anyway, but and, and now he's he's missing time <laughs> again. So this is the type of stuff that you know I think about as well. And and and, and I think about you know, and do the Yankees, you know, as Yankee fans, do we think they should get anybody they want? Yeah, of course. They're the Yankees, and they can pretty much outspend and outbid almost everybody, but they can't out prospect everybody, which is why they have to be more aggressive. In these things, even if they eat contracts, I and mean, the guy's over right now. I mean, there, there, I think are moves that can the, Yan the Yankees can make um, for a couple of guys that could at least put them on a better trajectory long term moving forward. I'm thinking the next three to five years. Not only this year, when they're hopefully going to be fighting for a second wild card spot. I, I, you know, unless they completely go blow blow through the threshold and make several significant moves, I don't see them going very far this season. I just don't. And it's unfortunate, and I hate saying it, and I'm sure other Yankee, fan, Yankee fans hate saying it too, but it's the it's the reality right now. It really is. And what are we going to do? So, I mean, if, again, if I were the GM, I would be very 
kind of shrewd and aggressive right now in terms of making trades to get more controllable players that can be here for the next three or four or five years. You know, even younger guys. You know, and I get prospects don't always pan out, but neither do major league ball players. Some guys sign these big contracts, and all of a sudden they get hurt, like Jacoby Ellsbury missed like five out of his seven seasons. You know, all of a sudden they get this big money and all, and there's injuries. All of a sudden, calf problems and this, that. So it happens all the time, which is why I'm in favor of the Yankees kind of, you know, consistently bringing in controllable players across the board and not always relying on signing guys at 30 or, you know, having a reunion with a pitcher who didn't work in the first place or getting these guys, these relief pitchers who were elite at 29 and were hoping to get the same production at 34, like Darren O'Day and some of these other guys, and don't. And they get hurt, and they, or they, they're just not productive, and then they miss the entire year. You know, start If you're going to go after these guys, go after them when they're younger. Yeah, it's going to be more expensive. We get that, but you know, there's nothing you can do about that. That's just baseball. So, but would you oh, would you rather overpay for 35 years old? I'd rather overpay for 29 and get them for controllable years. And I'd rather trade for the kind of Kate Tamartes and the Brian Reynolds type guys, where they're under control for the next four or five years at a very, very reasonable price. Yeah, it's going to cost a ton, but those are the deals you make. Those are the deals that the Dodgers make and the Rays make. and They use their prospects. And again, I think on the back end, getting a better scouting de uh, and development system as well, and better minor league development, particularly on the pitching side, is going to be premium too. Because, and I've said this in other videos, they pick in the back of the rounds most almost every year, but so do the Rays, so do the Dodgers, so do a lot of these other teams. But their prospects seem to be on a much higher end than the Yankees do. So even though the Yankees are, have a, a better farm this year than usual, and they have some, they've had some guys move up to the system on the offensive side, which is great, but I would not be afraid to use them, particularly when you have young, controllable players at the positions that these guys are playing as well. So you know, these are the things I'd be thinking about right now, particularly with what might happen this offseason, which could have ripple effects through the next bunch of seasons. So I'm hoping that the Yankees... Are, are, are smart about this and aggressive about it. But controllable players, you know, quite a few of them, to add to some of the guys that we already have and give some of our young guys a chance because they become controllable players too. And, you know, instead of trying to acquire controllable players all the time, we can have our own if we develop them well and give them a chance to play. So let me know what you think about this because, I, you know, I, I think this, this is something on the back of my mind all the time. And it could affect a lot of different things. It can affect free agency. It could affect the trade market, which is why this is the time for the Yankees to jump on this now. Now. Not next year. Now. 